Hi, Eduardo, Gatto. How do, how do, how do you want that I call you? Gatto. Gatto. Because I'm, yeah, when I'm in like a nanowar kind of uh, environment, so I'm talking about nanowar and nanowar stuff, then I'm Gatto. I got a double personality. like when you are, when Batman is, is fighting crime, then it's Batman. Otherwise, it's whatever. It's like yeah. the normal idiot that usually is just like me. So uh, what are you doing today? I'm doing... Uh, I don't know. What I'm doing it's great. I surviving, so it's a good news for me at least. Yeah, same here. I'm still alive, okay. so it's it's a it's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone yeah, might know. not be happy about it, but uh, yeah, haters might still not be happy about it. But yeah, <laughs> sorry, bad news for them. Yeah. So let's talk about Nano War of Steel. Um, it's been 20 years of the band. Yeah. Uh, if you look back at the beginning when you start, have you ever imaged that great success that you got, that you gain with time? Uh, no, we expected more. So we are pretty unsuccessful by any standards that we had. So we are really um unhappy about the status of the band we failed big time in 20 years and uh when i look back i said okay we had so many hopes to become the greatest metal band uh, in the universe um uh, we didn't so but no. you know there is still time yeah but there is still time but as we say for this next tour the upcoming tour we're getting old so the older you get uh the shorter the time left is then it's um uh, it's 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 gonna be tricky, and you you get all kind of uh, physical complications that might prevent you from playing properly. So that's it. We already passed the peak. Our peak was uh, well below what we expected. Um. So let us suck in peace. In the time you got so many different guests, uh, and. Uh, I want to know what is the reaction of of those uh, singers when you ask them to to come as guests to your songs. So uh, regarding guests, there's a kind of survivor bias in the sense that you only see the guests that accepted, and so the reaction cannot be that negative. But you don't see the, all those that refused or did not really want to refuse, but they ask for fees that uh, were extremely, extremely high just in case, you know. So they, I'm not going to say you know, but I'm going to ask you for like $200,000 billion. So, well, so you don't see those. And those are more interesting, I must say, because uh, anyway, I, I cannot really talk about those either because it's supposed to be confidential. Um, So usually the reaction of the singers is, okay, good. Um, do you have money? Yes. No, it's not even that. I mean, mo actually, mo many of them are our friends, and so they <laughs> we we did it <laughs> for 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 a symbolic fee or for nothing. So it's uh it's okay. That they they like it. I mean, usually, uh, it's, it's of course, if they didn't like it, they wouldn't do that, right? So yeah, true. But I think that the the most epic guest is Giorgio Mastrota, isn't it? Yes, I mean. Giorgio Mastrota is like um, it's a completely different league. First of all, because he's not a singer, but he's, he could sing really well on the on the song. Um, and second of all, because he's our hero since childhood, he's, he's one of the he's one of the pillars of Nano World of Steel, even though he didn't want to be. But yeah, and I think it's it was so cool when he, you got him. To, to sing in La Povolenta Taranya Rock. It's it was great crazy. of him. I mean, it was really, really kind. I think he's uh, really one of the kindest person we met in the business on, in all these years, in the sense that he was, you know, compared to the kind of size of the character. I mean, he's pretty famous and, yeah, you know, successful uh, pot seller, whatever. Um, but still, he was very, very humble, very down to earth, very, very friendly, I think was a really great character and a really great person and really great mattresses and really great pots and really great uh, Casanova pants now with um, 
yeah, insulation. So get those, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and there is any any singer or other musician or other person that you would like to have as a guest, but uh, you didn't yet contact? Well, there are a few. Um and we cannot contact them because we would like to of course we would like to have the greatest metal names as guests but it's not going to happen so we didn't even try and uh there's a few that we are in contact with and uh they agreed to do something and um so i i cannot really say much about those but um yeah i mean of course there's always someone that's uh that we are making fun of that we would like to take part in our parody and so we get more clicks on the videos so we 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 sort of succeeded with sabaton we succeeded with uh, lots of other guests but there's others that refuse consistently or they still didn't manage to but you know we parodied a lot of bands so you can just think of all the parodies that we did of each band and of course there's a guest there's a wannabe guest over there that we would like to have and it's gonna be the same in the future, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to make any spoilers or give false yeah, hopes yeah. or. So you are working on a new album, am I right? Mm. So we are going to release. Uh, by the end of the year, we should release the twenty year um, anniversary album. And um, yeah, this is the um, it's the new album, so to say, it's a live album. We are working on a bonus album to these uh, CDs with uh, some unreleased tracks, like tracks we recorded in the past and we never released, and um, some covers, some new versions. There's going to be a little bit of everything just to make sure that more people buy the stuff. But of course, the content is not going is, is, is not worth of being bought at all. So, But the new album, anyway, it's, it's been recorded already. It's been recorded, like the bulk of it has been recorded on live show in Milan. That took place on the twenty first of October last year. Okay. And now you talking about uh, gigs and uh, tour. Uh, you were just uh, at the end of January, beginning of February, to uh, seventy thousand tons of metal. So how was that as experience? I'm I'm always so fa uh, fascinated about you know about this. Uh, this uh, cruise and uh, I have this dream that I want to go one day because it's so something different. It is, it is. It's it's a very great it's a very great experience in my opinion. We really enjoyed it a lot. Now there's been a couple of technical issues. I'm not going to mention here because it's uh, <laughs> it's better not to. Um, but besides that, um, the shows were great. Like we enjoyed. We I think the best thing about the cruise is that all the musicians uh, just hang out around the cruise and so you can meet anyone you just walk around and meet people and then you can you know you, you spend the night with some we spend the nights you know like with, with Fabulione with uh we met Blind Guardian so so many times we, we we you know we're hanging out with other musicians I think that's that's one of the great things also uh the shows are really great there's uh the venues there's a couple of very very nice venues uh so you can see really good shows there's just so many bands so much choice um i i was really impressed i mean it's uh it's very good it's very good uh happening of course <laughs> the downside is <laughs> not for us but for normal people it's it's crazy expensive so i hope you're rich so you can enjoy it <laughs> you can enjoy it one day because it's a uh, i'm it's not pricey, rich like, for, but uh, yeah. you know you will become there is always yeah. the, the dream maybe one day i will win money absolutely you, you, you know just, i always yeah. say that i wish i'm going to win money one day but uh, you cannot win money if you don't try to win money. <laughs> so there is this issue. Maybe I should try to, you know, some game, some something. Some... Try algorithmic trading if you want. I don't know. I can help you with that. But uh... maybe one day I'm going to be famous for uh, no no reason, and I'm gain I'm gain uh, money. So there are ways of being famous, like I could mention a couple of names, like uh, Anna Maria Franzoni, Rosa Olindo, and <laughs> that, that, that's a way of becoming famous and then getting invited to, uh, you know, like television. Yeah, um, I think that it 
that's not maybe the best way to I, I was I was throwing people. ideas around. I was just brainstorming, so don't worry, it's not <laughs> you don't have to, but uh there's the Anna Maria Franzoni way to uh yeah, celebrity. Yeah. This word is crazy. <laughs> Konya is crazy, yeah. Yeah. But um let's get back to to the to the cruise. Um you had the two show, am I right? Yep. Yes. And uh how was the reaction from the people there? Uh, there were there many of your fans or there were more new people that didn't know about your music um so i think many i mean not the majority didn't know probably or maybe they heard like uh on original reggaeton like a couple of songs the reaction was very very good and uh i have the numbers to prove it because we sold out all the t-shirts and all the merchandise like on the first day <laughs> so cool uh, we made, uh, we didn't really make much money with that, but it was nice at least. So we had this badge of honor and we said, oh, everyone bought us stuff. So maybe they like it. Um, and yeah, no, on a serious note, well, um, we, we had very, very good reaction. So we got videos, actually, we got the full shows recorded. I think we're going to release them at some point. Maybe I still need to check it out, all the material we have, but the reaction was very, very good. There were many people know that knew the songs already. There were people that came, for example, from Brazil, I remember. And they had the the t-shirts with the yeah for the Pasadena that. yeah, uh, they were waving like Brazilian flags during Pasadena and stuff. Um, Pasadena nineteen ninety four, of course. Like um, for those who don't know, it's one of our latest singles. And um, yeah, I think uh, was overall the impact was good. Was really good. Like the show went great, and people were happy about the shows. Not about the technical issues, but the shows were great. Yeah, sometimes technical issues are part of. Uh, it's a it's a nickname I'm giving to a big mess, but uh, let let's keep that part and move to the next question, please. Yeah. So now we are you are at the end of March, going to tour around Europe. So what your fans are can expect from from your show this time? Um, older people doing shit on stage like um, they can expect what they saw in the past well, there's gonna be a bunch of new songs old songs we didn't play last tour and we are gonna be older one year older compared to last year so that's pretty much it yeah <laughs> time just goes so fast so time goes one second per second it's a very incredible speed yeah. Yeah. So you were like 15 two days ago and now now you can that's feel that's you can you can you can feel in your joints some something going on. I I I feel in my in my head that some uh, and my hair that something is going on. Yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, actually no, my head I think I'm still stuck at the 16 year old age face but uh, apart from that yeah <laughs> I must say that uh, I start to feeling in my joints that time time get it's best uh, well there's not much not we can do bad. about it well no. we can just wait and die so yeah Let's do we it. have just one uh, one sure thing in this life and it's that at some point yes. we are gone yeah death but and podcasts okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's get back to the music, maybe, and not talk okay. to, to the. Uh, let, we let's we talk could about talk death metal. maybe more to, about that, but yeah, it's it, let's let's concentrate about your music. Um, Should we? Maybe. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. There's other interesting things going around. But um, um, I want to know. How do you, or who is the one that uh, that get the ideas for the for the songs? We all do. Oh, it's a co it's a joint effort. Is it a easy process or is it complicated? It's a natural process. That's beautiful. So, yeah, it's. Uh... 
you know, you think about something stupid, you develop it, you take it back and forth with your friends, you develop the idea, eventually add some music to it, write down some lyrics, done. Yeah. And now when it comes to music videos, because I love your music videos, they are always so well done and just there is so much effort put in those. Uh, is you as a band that have the idea and uh, the image of what you want or uh, there is someone else? There is someone else. It's uh, We ask Allah. We are... We go to the mosque and we pray and we get the information from the Quran. So it's always from yeah. the it's from the from the above, yeah. Yeah. We get inspiration from above. Yeah. Do you have a favorite music video? Me. Um from Nano War of Steel, of oh, course. Oh, from Nano. Oh, okay. So is, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't. You love all at the same. I right? hate the, all of them. I, I get bored they, after yeah, yeah. shooting it. You get bored. So so which one is the one that you get bored more easily? Uh, more easily. Ooh, all of them. Yeah. I, I don't suggest. I don't recommend watching our videos. They're boring. They're also boring to shoot. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't try it at home. In Protocols of Love, I I just love the way that is so much uh, taken from Backstreet Voice <laughs> and the white clothes from I want it that way it's <laughs> and the choreography I want I want to know about the choreography uh, because also in Norwegian uh, reggaeton and uh, all the o- other videos you are dancing or moving on the music yes do you consider yourself uh, a dancer? Of course. I mean, I'm the worst dancer in the world, but still a dancer. I'm a shitty dancer, but I'm a dancer. I got videos that prove that I can move myself and there is some music. So I'm a dancer. Yeah, that's the point. Absolutely. I also, I'm kind of dance, a dancer. You know, when I listen to a song... <laughs> what kind of dance? <laughs> Wait, because when I listen to a song that gets me inspired with, I, I create a beautiful choreography. I'm a choreographer. Damn. But yeah, what kind of dancer? The one that dance while, while cleaning, thinking that I, I'm dancing so beautifully. And then when I'm in front of the mirror, I go, oh, fuck it. Fuck, fuck the hell, what's that? <laughs> okay. So How I can you know. dance while cleaning? What? How can you dance while cleaning? Aren't you afraid of putting all these chemicals in the air? I'm going to die anyway. Yeah, but later is better than sooner, right? I don't know. You never know. Okay. At least I see myself as a old lady screaming to the youngers with, you know, like... You don't understand nothing, but let's see. Let's see okay. if I'm going at, to be at this point uh, screaming to people being this uh, brutal uh, grandma. Or I'm not going to be a grandma, just a <laughs> elderly. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, but uh, uh, how do you get ready for the live shows? What do you do? We, don't. we are never ready. You are never ready. No, we just dress up and say, let's go. Okay, let's do it. And what do you do after after the show? Uh, we do stuff, um, incredible stuff, like drinking or mysterious things like, for example, taking our clothes off. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, the, the things that we managed to do, no one it's is crazy. able to do those things, you know. No, no. I no, have no. never heard anyone. No way. No no one can came up with uh, these kind of ideas. It's only for Nanowar of Steel. I know you have to be this kind of uh, high level committed to parody and then you can do that, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 
But now let's uh, get to the question because there are a lot of questions. You are the first. I hope they're guest, stupid. Uh, you are the first guest that got so many questions. Uh, um, I had a few that got few questions, but you are the first one with so many. Let's get into Instagram. Okay. And there is a uh, bear, the wise man, and uh, she asked, uh, "Is there a limit to the silliness they they explore?" Mm, maybe. Maybe. Uh, there are legal limits to the silliness. Yes, that's for sure. So there are legal boundaries that uh, constrain our action. Yeah, and our speech. Then there is Facebook with a lot of question and. There is some in Italian also, and then there is one in Serbian that I will try to read in Serbian. Okay. I don't know Serbian, so we you will grade me to my pronouns. Let's see okay. if I if I get to pass this exam let's, or if let's I see. have to to start to study. <laughs> you should. So, uh, Niria Salerno asks, "Who is George W. Sanchez?" Who is George W. Sanchez? Good question. We have a song that in the future will explain everything. For the moment, you have to know that he was a hero that fought the Chupacabra Cadabra and was gang raped by some cows. Okay, so we are to we are waiting for the song then. Oh yeah, sure. There's gonna be like a full song about it. Nice. Then there is uh, Fabrizio Ridolfi. Quanto sei felice di essere più famoso del gatto originale oggi? Non lo sono, ma non me ne frega un cazzo. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Then there is uh, Wendy Spate Bragg. What are your early musical influences? Do you have plans yet for another album? How are you also amazing? Uh, early musical influences. Uh, the usual stuff. So... Yeah, you can imagine. You can imagine you, you you hear the music we do and then you, you you get you get where we stole it from. We are not amazing, we suck. And then what else did she ask? Uh she asked about uh, the plans for another album, but we told No, 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 it's boring. No, no, no more albums. That's it. So then there is the question in uh, Serbian from okay. Dejan Dinic. Uh, okay, I I try. Don't laugh too much. Nechu <laughs> nechu. Dali planiaria. Planirash. Planirash. Nastupe u Serbi. Da Dali se zvadai medi snovo na problema ili turnei ko najavize pi Pivo uh, u bendu. <laughs> Maybe oh, I'm going uh, to translate if he didn't get anything. <laughs> no, I got the first part was when I, when are you going to play in Serbia? Why are there not concerts in Serbia? So is uh, now the translation my... Finnish? Yeah. Do you want that I read in Finnish? Maybe not because you no, 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 <laughs> no. Yet. So are you planning uh, to to play in Serbia? And uh, I don't know if the translation is right, but uh, it say uh, uh, what's what's the meat? Maybe you can just write it or send it, like write it here in the chat, so I, I can read it the original. Let's let's see if we can have uh, this. Uh, can can you read? Uh, no, because okay. Dali se sfidaju među. Ah, među sobom na prvom ili turneju. Svađaju. Ah, okay. If we um uh, are fight, uh, if we have fights among ourselves when okay. we are recording or we are on, on a tour, and then the third question was uh, um, so something with beer. I, I didn't read yeah, the third who, question. Who's, who is the one that drink more beer? Ah, okay. Uh, first of all, pička vam materina svima. Ako razumete srpski. Um, and so the next thing is, uh, well, the first question is, we are not going to Serbia because we are not getting invited, of course. 
filthy pitchke they are not inviting us and dabogda mm, well i'll just stop here um second question no we don't really fight that much we just sleep all the time we are boring and we all drink a lot of beer we don't really know who's the one who can handle the largest quantities so sorry we don't have an answer for that okay the next is roberto di leo quanti oh. anni aveva garibaldi eh, Garibaldi quando aveva 12 anni ha avuto 12 anni, quindi a Garibaldi a 12 anni aveva 12 anni. Uh, then there is Tiziana Pinessi and there are three questions. The first one okay. is, what's the best part of being Nano War of Steel? Is having Tiziana Pinessi as a fan. Beautiful. Uh, have you ever had legal problems due to copyright reasons? Uh, no, but we had problems with the fan named Tiziana Pinessi because of copyright reasons, because there were many fans that wanted to change their name to Tiziana Pinessi just to be as awesome as the original Tiziana Pinessi, so they had to be sued. And then there is, what do your families think of what you do? They think that we should better uh, look at Tiziana Pinessi as a moral uh, image and like uh, inspire our lives to her life and be more like her instead of being more like us. Yeah, I'm agree. <laughs> okay, let's get to the next. Uh, and it's again Roberto Di Leo that asked dove era Mazzini? Mazzini era una volta era a casa sua. L'ho visto. Una volta lui aveva una casa e ci stava dentro. E come hai visto? Hai sbirciato con un, con un Ho binocolo? Ho visto con la macchina del tempo. Si è andato a spiarlo. Certo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Then there is Richard Cole. Okay. Can you tell us more about your uh, Python script? Uh, well, I have many Python scripts. I got a full Python repository for those who are interested. Uh, I got a, well, it, it's actually my GitHub repository. There's Python scripts. And uh, I think he was referring to a very specific script called Python Routines for Cosmology and Data Input Output. So... It's a very famous um, collection of routines for cosmological analysis because if you take the initials, then it becomes PyrCodeo. That's the name. Okay. That's the name of the program I wrote for my scientific research. Okay. Good to know. Yep. Yeah. But uh, uh, there were not other questions here, but I have a question like many other questions i'm here to ask you things okay so uh have you ever played in finland yes when uh, where i was it was in the winter of 2022 at the john smith frozen festival i think the place was ivaskila or something like that yeah so yes we played in finland yeah we are not finland virgin anymore so when are you coming next time? When they invite us. Waiting for it. I will just press to some Absolutely. promoter to ask you. Absolutely. I, I'm going to be the annoying one, asking everyone, can you please? Exactly. Do this that. is what, what should be done. Do that on our behalf. Yeah, we need yeah. more pressure. Yeah. And um, what bus do you use actually or how many buses do you have? I'm using a Meridian custom base. So I got a custom version made for me with a, a small cat depicted on top. So it's fun. When did you start to play bass? When our first uh, bass player left, 2003. Okay. And I was just replacing him. Okay. Was it easy for you to learn or? No, I didn't learn yet. So. It's an ongoing process. Yeah, yeah. I'm still learning. Yeah. But uh, let's get to something else. You are a polyglot. How many languages can you can you understand speak. and speak? Like speak, I was like 10. Then I'm studying Polish at the moment. I'm not fluent, but it's uh, okay. I can 
go through. I don't know. My benchmark for speaking a language is getting stopped uh, by the police or the army in some weird place and surviving. So I can tell I did that, yeah, in uh, in Russia, Ukraine, in uh, Moldova, Transnistria, Abkhazia, in Serbia, Kosovo, Israel, Palestine, Egypt, yeah. So, and I managed to survive in these places with my linguistic capabilities yeah. or to be uh, mistaken for a spy, which happened very often. Okay, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. No. Well, it's not cool if you are uh, stopped by the police or the army and they think that you are a spy. Then, then it can be quite tricky in certain countries. Yes. And uh, did you ever risk to get uh, in jail in one of those countries? Not in jail, but I got uh, a lot of issues. Like I was uh, followed by, I was... Uh... Yeah, I, I needed to run sometimes. In Kosovo, once I had to run away. <laughs> uh, in Egypt, I had a very, very bad experience with the police that stopped me. Um, in uh, Umm al-Fahim, which is a, uh, it's, uh, an Arab city in the north of Israel. So it's inside Israel, but it's uh, mainly uh, Arab populated. And I went there for visit and everyone was stopping me. And they were asking me a lot of questions. They were very, very suspicious. They were following me all the time. So I didn't really feel... <laughs> Uh, there's many places I visited. Well, I didn't really feel comfortable, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. In um, in uh, in trans in in, in Transnistria, so the Pridnestrovskaya, the Moldavskaya Respublika, so that that uh, the breakaway part of Moldova. Then I had uh, I had to bribe the officers at the border because they were stopping us all the time. I mean, they were not letting letting us through. They were interrogating us. I was with a friend. And then I had to bribe them. I had to put some money in the passport and then give it back to them and then they let me go through. So, okay. Have you ever been scared in those situations? In Egypt, I was, yes. <laughs> in Egypt, with, I had a very bad experience with the, with the police. They were uh, sort of threatening me at some point and uh, were very suspicious because I, I was living in Israel for many years. I worked there at university. And so I had Israeli visas on my... Um, on my passport, and I went to the police station in Sharm el-Sheikh to get a visa to go to El Cairo, because you can travel from Israel to Egypt to Sharm el-Sheikh visa-free, and then you need a visa. Um, and then I got interrogated, and they were really, really scary. I mean, I remember they were talking among them, and they were telling, okay, what should we do with this Italian? He has all this uh, Israeli passport. What should I do? And then at some point, one guy disappeared for half an hour. Uh, and then I they they just said oh, we cannot do anything for you just get away, and then I got a call, a phone call. I just bought like five like a half an hour before that I bought a Egyptian SIM card, and then um, I got a phone call on this SIM, and someone said I can help you come to this hotel at uh, um, eleven p.m. Uh, like in the night, and we'll see what we can do. And, and the guy was speaking Italian by the way. And then I went there and. It was, it's a long story, so but yeah, he he, re he couldn't really help. I I just got scammed. But um... okay, and you have been uh, in eighty countries at least, including the unrecognized one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What what what's the the coolest place? The one that you remember as like something uh, spectacular. Oh, there's plenty of them. I cannot choose one. I mean, I can tell, like, that's my my top favorites is uh, Serbia, for sure. Jerusalem uh, was very, very, very interesting place to live. I had a, uh, it's a, uh, I don't know. For me, it was, it was interesting because I'm interested in languages, cultures, and Jerusalem is just a mixture. There's everything. There's all sorts of politics, political activities. There's a uh, history. There's um, uh, there's an ongoing conflict, of course. Uh, but it's um, it's just so interesting. You, every person you meet has some. I don't know. I I, I met like uh, Palestinians that work for Hamas and Israelis that are working for peace. Extremist Israelis. I mean, every kind of person on earth. It was. It's interesting. You get the perspective of so many different people at the same time. Plus, Jerusalem is a city. That uh, within one kilometer of radius, you got three or four completely different worlds because there's like the modern part, then you got the historical center, just like the within the city walls. 
but then you have all the Arab quarters, and then there's the ultra Jewish, uh, ultra Orthodox Jewish quarters are completely different as well. And yeah. uh, every time you cross the road, then you're in a different country, basically. And it's one of the few cities I know that has this kind of magic. It is, seriously, because if you cross the road and you go to the Mea um, Sharim, is the um, ultra Orthodox Jewish quarter. It's like, as a friend of mine said, it's like going to Budapest in uh, in the 19th century. Because they live a very old, uh, they don't have internet. They are against the television. They are against, basically, they are living a very, very old uh, kind of uh, uh, fashion life. So with with the clothes as well. So it's very, it's a very interesting place to go. Then of course you got all the Palestinian neighborhoods. You got all the city center with the mosques, with the church, the all the, the historical and religious places. There's um, the new part where you get any kind of bars and you know like normal activities, normal nightlife. And it's everything is so close. It's it's crazy. It's one of the places I like the most. Yeah, and there is any any place uh, that you visit uh, around the world that was a bit like uh, disappointing. Oh, it's many. There's many of those. Yeah, it's too many. I think because there's a lot of hype around many places that you then then go at it. Oh well, it doesn't really look like this. Um. I don't know. I was disappointed at Madeira, like the uh, Portuguese islands uh, in the um, ocean. I think, yeah, it's close to the Canary Islands. It looked, uh, I don't know, like you couldn't really swim in many places. Maybe it was like a, most of a matter of coincidences, but the hikes were not so great. Um, I don't know. We didn't really have a good feeling there. On the other hand, like the Azores Islands are much better. Always talking about Portugal, so Portugal, so I can say something <laughs> positive about that country as well. But I really like the Azores, so maybe... I don't know. There's there's many places I I was a little bit uh, disappointed. I don't know. There's uh, some cities in the U.S. Maybe, I mean Los Angeles, for example, is is a dumpster for many <laughs> for many things. Are very very dirty, and I'm used to Rome, but it's uh, it's very sketchy and dodgy, and sometimes it's uh, it's just too, too dirty and and and, and to you know like with the homeless problems and stuff. It's uh, it's a mess. Yeah, and in Italy. Uh... Have you ever lived anywhere else outside of Rome? No, no, I only lived here. Yeah. And have you ever thought to, you know, going to another city? Actually, yes. When I Because I lived abroad for like 11 years, 11, 12 years. And then um, when I moved back to Italy, which I didn't really want to move back, but it was COVID time, so there were not many options. Actually, during the first lockdown, I was... Uh, I moved to Serbia. I was in Belgrade for the first months uh, of COVID during the first lockdowns in Italy. Then I couldn't, it was hard to get a visa. I had to move back. Um, and um, and I thought, well, maybe I'm going to some more livable place because Rome is not really um, human friendly. <laughs> it's a mess of a city and it's very dirty, very chaotic. It's expensive. But then I got stuck here. And so when I was looking around places, I thought at some point, maybe Trieste. Hey, Looks I'm like, from yeah, Trieste. You yeah. know? <laughs> no, it's, it's because it's pretty cheap. There's, uh, so first of all, I like the Balkans a lot. It's very close to the places I love, like Serbia and Croatia. You can travel there very easily. It's a very cheap city. I've seen like the uh, rentals and uh, buying is, is, is extremely cheap. There's, I like the center. It's, uh, it's nice and tidy. So I said, okay, this could be an option. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, uh, you know Trieste is a multicultural city. There is so much uh, that have to do with history, with the history of yeah. the city. There is so much influences, and of course, being on the border with Slovenia and uh, having, for example, you you love uh, Serbia, so there is this big Serbian community. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, in Trieste, science, it's a huge, uh, yeah. science. I, I don't remember even since when I I actually have a lot of friends that are from Serbia but live in Trieste yeah, yeah. or in other city. Still I don't I, I don't understand how I, I never learn any of those uh, Slavic languages. Uh, I understand something, you know, because when you have friends or uh, workmates that speak uh, a certain language, then you you get something you get uh, some words uh, and it's interesting uh, yeah yeah 
but uh, yeah, I fell in love with uh, Finland and uh, I was like, I have okay. to finish and so I did. <laughs> but uh, how was to get back to Italy after many years uh, living uh, abroad? Was it easy? Uh, was it uh, like... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, yeah. Okay. So I didn't, yeah, I had, um, I didn't have many, uh, it was pretty easy to find a job for me and my business sort of, uh, I mean, it wasn't really my um, activity because I, I, I was, I'm trained as an astrophysicist, but I moved to machine learning, artificial intelligence and data analysis. So basically it's, uh, yeah. I could do pretty easily and there's plenty of jobs in that field. So I got a nice job. It's an interesting, I'm pretty happy about it. and. Um, Plus, uh, I found pre I I could find my I mean I could get a home easily. It's uh it was pretty easy everything. I mean probably it was because of COVID and there was not much going on. So like for these practical things were quite quite nice and uh, and easy and yeah then you know there's all the family friends kind of aspect which was also pretty nice. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice to hear that it was not complex or or anything. No, not like for me. That. Yeah. 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 Because you know there are a lot of uh, Italians around the world, and uh, some uh, dreams to get back to Italy. They miss Italy so much, and some get back to Italy, and then they are like, "I need to get away from here as soon as possible." So it's always curious to hear the story from from other people uh i don't feel that i want to get back to italy to okay. live. uh on holiday yeah but i i feel that i belong to finland so, okay well good for you <laughs> so that's a, that's a something but it's always uh, nice to hear the, the other point of view and uh, yeah but uh i had something in my mind oh yeah you have the PhD in astrophysic. Uh, so getting back when uh, you were thinking when you were a child, uh, did you know back then that you want to, to study astrophysic? Was always that a thing or? No, I chose it sort of last minutes along the path. I mean, I knew I wanted to I don't know. At some point, I wanted to study philosophy, then languages. And then I said, okay, but philosophy and languages, maybe I can do on my own. But physics is probably, if I need to go and study something at university, physics is probably going to be of more help if I do it. I'm not, I, that, there's no way I'm going to open a physics book and, and study it on my own unless uh, you do all the, you know, there, there's a lot of things that you need to study and you cannot simply probably do on your own. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and so that was my choice. And then along the way, I decided to move to astrophysics for many reasons, um, cosmology. And then, yeah, um, it's happened like that. So, okay, that's cool. Uh, yeah. You know, there are people that know science, they childhood what they want to do. And then uh, everybody else is uh, leaving the the day after day and see what what they get and uh, it's i think it's really interesting what the life can bring to you without <laughs> without without thinking it too much we sometimes i think we people overthink uh and we sh should just go ahead and try if you don't try you don't know yeah, there's the. I mean, you you need to have to 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 make up your mind at some point. But yeah, it's um. I don't know. Then when you what you what you desire as a child, of course, then it's uh, something else. That when you uh, face reality, and then you might change that. Yeah, true. But now let's get to metal in general. So okay. I want to know when. Did you start to listen metal? I was like 15 years old and I started uh, with Metallica and Iron Maiden. 
And then I got uh, this tape from the brother of Valerio, our guitar player. So his brother was one of the first metalheads I knew, and he gave me a tape with Blind Guardian, Sepultura, and other songs. And so that was sort of the Trojan host that got me into, that got metal into me, actually, into my yeah. <laughs> head. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, that's, uh, I was, yeah, 15 years old, sort of. Like yeah. uh, no one in my family really has a um, passion for music, so I'm I'm the only one more or less that really plays and listens to a lot of music. So yeah, it came from friends basically. Yeah, and what are you listening nowadays? Uh, what what some are you listening to metal in, for example, Ooh. this week? What did you listen? Okay, metal I'll, I'll, or uh, something else? I listen to everything. Uh, so when I when I say I listen to everything, it's because I listen to Serbian folk, I listen to rap, uh, Israeli pop, and then I don't know. I was listening to Dissection and uh, Bolt Thrower. Then I got my yeah Yugoslavia, Yugo rock playlist. Okay. Um. Like in the last couple of weeks about metal, I've been listening a lot again to this section. It was a band that I really liked many years ago. And now I was listening back to this section and, and uh, Bolt Thrower also. There's yeah. bands that I sort of grew up. I like extreme metal, so they're one of the best. Maybe in the 90s, they were really great bands. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. When you talk about the... Yugoslavia rock. What what were you talking about? I I want to know what what's there. So there was in Yugoslavia in the eighties. There was a very active rock scene, especially in Sarajevo. So there were many bands. Uh, there, are, like for the ones that are inside. Uh, so this kind of circle, there are sort of legendary. There's a Zabranje Nopušenje. There's a Biero Dugme. That's more from the seventies though. Uh, there's a. Azra, there's a uh, EKV, there's there's a lot of bands. It was very Yugoslavia was very very productive with the with the music. Um, they had a very very um, they had a great music scene. I liked I I like a lot of music from Yugoslavia from the seventies and the and the eighties. Um, I mean Goran Bregovic, for example, he was the guitar player of uh, Biero Dugme, which is one of the it is the most prominent uh, rock band from Yugoslavia. It was the biggest. Yugoslavian band of all times. I mean, still nowadays they, when they play in, uh, I I went seen them uh, one year ago. But they they sometimes they reunite and they play some shows in Croatia, Slovenia, um, Serbia, and and so on. So, and they had a very nice punk scene as well, especially in Croatia. There's a bunch of punk bands I like from Croatia. Um, there's a um, there's a lot of that. That 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 that's a kind of thing I like, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, it's interesting because I don't know if I ever meet anyone talking about uh, you know band that were doing rock in or punk in Yugoslavia back in time. So mm. it, it, it's something. Something different. I think that no many people are going to mention, but I think that everybody should then listen and check out all those. It's uh, it's. I mean, of course, there's. Uh, if you speak the language, then it's it's a different thing because there's bands like Zabranje uh, Opuštenje, which is um, actually uh, the singer of Zabranje Opuštenje sings with uh, Emir Kusturica. The director, I, I, I guess you know, I don't know, Black Cat, White Cat, and there's, he made a lot of famous movies. Uh, and so they have a band. It's called the uh, No Smoking Orchestra because the band, the band was named uh, Zabranje Nopušenje, Nele Karalić. And so it's from the original for um, formation of the Zabranje Nopušenje, and so the, the original uh, member from the eighties. Then after the war, they they changed because some of them were Serbs, some of the the others were Bosnians, and they sort of got into fight. Um, but yeah, so Zabanyan Pushin has very, very funny lyrics sometimes, and they describe the life in the 80s in uh, in in um, in Yugoslavia. Even the later songs from the 90s, they, there's many songs about the war, but they're still funny. One one thing I like a lot about uh, the Balkans and the Yugoslavia in general 
uh, specifically Serbia, is that the sense of humor they have, they always keep, even when, you know, they, they went all embargoes, wars, uh, civil war sort of, uh, all, all the kind of shit during the 90s. And then you look at the movie production and the musical production they had during those years, even in the 80s when they were sort of, there were signals they were going to the collapse of the country and the things were not so stable. Um, there is just so much irony and so much um, not taking themselves seriously, even though you know the situation is, of course, uh, which is something I really like. It's it's um, it's it's a part of also my way. It's something that we do with Nano in a way. It's uh, you know, there's there's serious topics, but you still try to laugh about stuff because that's yeah. make that's what I think it improves lives and uh, that's uh, that that's one thing. So. It's a part of the lyrics of the band I mentioned. Uh, Bielo Dugwe probably is, is a little bit more, you know, you can, you know, like intonation, that's good melodies and stuff. It's not so, they have good lyrics, but they're not so related to the um, um, political and um, social developments as the others. So it's probably, I'm a little bit less relevant in that sense. But yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> and thinking back in time, yeah. What was the first gig that you ever attend? Uh first gig was Articolo 31. Okay. In, um, yeah. In 1996 uh, was the Così Come Tour. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean I might have been to some like local gigs, you know, like you go to some fair and uh when I was yeah, younger like 12, 10, but I don't remember anything. That was the first one I Got a ticket and I, I I went specifically to see. Yeah. And um, like to be honest, like I I like I think Così uh, Come I like the first like two three albums by Artico, the first three albums by Artico Trento is is pretty cool. I went last year to to see them when they're reunited. Re reunited. Um, I like rap. I mean, I like Salmo a lot, for example. I'm a huge fan of Salmo in Italy. Yeah. Uh, I like Italian rap. Yeah. So I mean, I don't like Italian. I like like two or three rappers that I really really like. Most of the things I don't, but uh, yeah, Caparezza, Salmo, and probably yeah, Frankie Energy. Those three I like a lot. Many others I don't, I don't dig so much, but yeah, those that I really like, yeah, then I I'm a big fan. Yeah. So what what's in your opinion, if you talk about metal or rock, the best or your favorite that you are like? I'm going to listen to this. Uh, band or artist from italy rock or metal oh you mean rock or metal or yeah the best the one that you like more maybe not to, because best is a big yeah no no the one i like the most like in rock and metal one metal band i really really like and i think they are probably i like musically because it's one i like extreme metal so i would say probably flesh cut apocalypse or the one I would listen to uh, the most, like I like the most listening to. Then, of course, there's, you know, Rhapsody of Fire, Windrose. There's a lot of good power metal bands out there. But I, yeah, I'm a big extreme metal fan. And so I would say they are the most creative and they had a couple of albums that are almost perfect, like with yeah, compositions yeah. and stuff. I really, really like them. So I am agree. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are, you know, several good metal bands from Italy. Um, of course, if, uh, if, you are no, in... still... <laughs> if you are in Italy, it's maybe a bit uh, harder to to get, uh, you know, to get out from from Italy to being no uh, compared, for example, to Finland, uh, that metal is a big a big thing. But yeah, uh, yeah still, uh, still, there are so many that that are doing really really great and that did also and uh yeah you mentioned rhapsody of fire yeah coming from trieste <laughs> it's, ah well yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it it was you know one of the of the biggest thing when uh, when i start to listen to metal ah, yeah. then i moved more nowadays uh i listen a bit of everything in metal but it got a bit more extreme and the death death core is something big nowadays for me oh, okay and um, but it depends it goes with the day with the mood 
you know, I can listen to Backstreet Boys and then not to to something else. Absolutely. Like yeah, yeah. So, but now let's get to my jar or random topics and let's see what okay. we are going to talk about. Um, the first is cars. So, do you own a car? Yes. What car is? It's a Ford Puma Hybrid. Okay. Got it last year because my last year I went to Mexico for three weeks during the winter holidays. And in the meanwhile, they managed to break into my car <laughs> and I had an old Peugeot and it was almost, yeah, they didn't stole it. They, they just tried to break into it, but they destroyed the doors and I said, okay, I have to get a new one anyway. So since one year, I'm a owner of a, it's, it's a good car. So I don't give a shit about cars normally. Um, I just know I went, you know, I go to some places, say, okay, I like this one. How much is that? I'll get it. Yeah. That yeah. was my process. It was a new one or a second hand? Uh second hand almost new. I mean it was like yeah. Yeah, in good very good condition. Yeah. It was like two, one year used or something. Okay. So Anything. it was a good deal. Yeah, yeah, it was good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what color it is? Grey. Dark grey, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have um, a favorite uh, car color? Because uh, when I think about car, and um, I think always that I if I don't have drive license, so <laughs> if I will have a drive license and I will have a car, uh, I would like to have uh, it in a color that uh, it didn't get that dirty too easily. <laughs> so that's that's something. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I avoided a white car. But uh, no, I don't. I don't care that much about the color. So whatever. Yeah. But since you are not a car person, let's get no. another topic. Let's yes. see if we, we are more lucky with something else. Books. So oh, wow. do you like to read? I read a lot, yes. So what are you reading right now? So I'm reading a book in Serbia. It's called Nazia in Nationalism. It's called Nation and Nationalism. Then I'm reading uh, a book about um, curiosities in Rome. It's like uh, the, it describes the city and then, you know, every corner there's something and it tells about the stories of the different places. Then I will, I'm, re I'm reading more books at the same time, of course. I always do. Um... And then I'm reading some scientific stuff on uh, um, it's on climate modeling. So I'm reading some. Uh, it's a book. It's it's called it's a climate modeling primer. Actually, it's a it's a technical book about uh, simulations of the climate system of the Earth. So um, and I'm reading those your, three. What's your favorite book? Do My you favorite have a book. Favorite? Yes. Uh, Umiliati Offesi di Fyodor Dostoevsky. I don't know what's the title in English. I think it's... Uh, let me just check it. Dostoevsky. What's the title in English? It's... Uh, Humiliated and Insulted. Okay, yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, it's my favorite book. Yeah. I like, I like a lot of Fyodor Dostoevsky. I mean, I read it pretty much... Every, I mean, everything like the mostly the, the most known books I read them. There is any uh writing style or genre of book that you don't like, you avoid. So, generally, I have I don't like science fiction, I don't like uh fantasy, I don't really read that. Uh, it's not maybe I would even like it, I don't know. I never got into that, so I'm Either I read some classic, um, like if it's some classic novel, or I mostly read about history, politics, economics, or like some technical book. Yeah. Um, that's the thing I like the most. Yeah. Yeah, something that talk facts more than. Yeah, it's more. It's mostly about that. It's, it's something, some essays, or. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is any book that uh, you have in your list that you want to read, but you didn't yet? Oh, I got my Kindle book that I uh, downloaded, uh, or I bought. I got a bunch of those. Um, 
And then I got a few on my shelf over there. I could check. Actually, there is a grammar of Polish language. I don't know if that counts. Yeah. <laughs> I got a list of um. There's there's a couple of books I would like to read also more on on the on climate. So I'm from a again from a technical point of view. I'm so like the physics and the chemistry of a climate system. And um, those I got on on my um, tablet. On my Kindle, I had a couple of books. I think it was mostly history of the Middle East. So I got a book about Syrian history, and I got uh, got something about uh, Iran as well that I would like to read. Just to mention the first, I mean, I got a huge list, so yeah. my to read list is huge. Um, I got a philosophy book from a good friend of mine, Pat Flynn, uh, that I started, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, I forgot to mention it. It's called um, uh, what was it? It's the argument for God. It's like the um, uh, let me let me get the title straight. Um, uh, Flynn. Okay, the best argument for God. Okay, and it's about philosophy. Is is um theist? I'm not, but uh, I mean, he's a believer. I'm, I'm not a believer, but I think it's interesting to understand other people's perspective. And this book is really well written. There's a lot of philosophical references. It's very challenging. So yeah, it's a yeah. it's a good yeah. read. It's interesting. And uh, how much time do you spend in uh, in reading? Maybe on average one hour per day before yeah. sleeping. Yeah. And, you know, reading is important. And now I'm saying this and I, I have a few books there. I don't know. I You know, sometimes I take, buy a book. I like to buy the book. I have yeah, a, yeah, Kindle, yeah. a Kindle also. I read something there. I use more to read something about, uh, you know, um, anatomy and the physiotherapy relates okay. stuff because I'm a physiotherapist. Okay. <laughs> so it's something that it's always interesting to read. Um, but other than that, I really don't have, uh, you know, a kind of uh, book that I, you know, I, I'm more into. I usually go with the feeling. And when I go to a bookstore, I look around and when I feel oh, this one may be interesting, then I read a bit like, okay, I can take it home. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, I don't have a rule when it comes to reading. Uh, and I have been not reading that much lately, and that's bad. Uh, but I had so many things going on that. Um, now it's time it's, to get the book yeah. on, on the end. So yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But now let's go to the most important topic of this okay. uh, of this podcast talk show or whatever you want to call it, and it's pizza. Do you like pizza? Okay, of course. Yeah. What, what a question! Uh, yeah. What's your favorite pizza? I can tell you the best pizza I've ever had. I don't have a favorite pizza. I always take something different every time, so I'm not. But I can tell you the best pizza I've ever had was, uh, I remember it, it was in Corsica, so technically in France, and it was a pizza with um, uh, what's it, it's like goat cheese and honey. Okay. That I still remember. It was, wow, I was so happy about that pizza. I remember that. I dream about that pizza every day. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And uh, where did you eat the worst pizza? The worst pizza? Hmm. I, I had so many bad pizzas along the way, I cannot remember it. So. And I eat everything. I mean, I, I don't care in the end. I'm not picky. I mean, I I like pineapple pizza. I, I eat everything, seriously. When I when I say that, I, I mean that. I mean, I we, we used to do an, um, in the backstage, like sometimes... Uh, a few years ago, we we did the backstage uh, sandwich challenge, and we would 
take all the food we had in the backstage and put it in a sandwich. So whatever kind of food we had, if we had Mars bars, then we put a Mars bar, then we had uh, ham, you put ham, you had chips, you put chips, you got orange. And then we made a sandwich out of everything. And then I was always uh, winning those challenges. I was eating that all. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I can say that I'm quite picky. Because okay. I like everything or combination of salt and sweet. It's something that uh, my brain cannot uh, uh, comprehend. But <laughs> it's nice when someone else can eat uh, whatever. And you you mentioned the pineapple pizza. So the que the question is always the, the one that by the word. Does pineapple belong to pizza? Yes or not? Of course, everything can belong to pizza. There's no such thing as the Ten Commandments of pizza. So if you want to put it on and you like it, why not? <laughs> yeah. And I think that uh, many are going to be surprised to hear an Italian saying something like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, but I'm not a typical Italian. I, I, I'm a four, four or five Sigma Italian, so it's... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I always I, I'm not that, a good uh... sample. You know, I don't like, uh, as I told you, uh, sweet and salt together. So for me, pineapple on the pizza, I add pineapple on the pizza and I just take it off and then I eat. <laughs> it's uh, okay. something that I did because I maybe also the pineapple itself is not something that I would buy. I don't know. I think it's fun. It's also finish. Yeah, it's, anyway. it's a fun, you know, it's a fun looking uh, fruit. Uh, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, not not my not my thing. Okay. But, yeah, everybody can uh, put whatever they want on pizza if it's on their pizza and not on mine. We have pizza we freedom in yeah in this world. Yeah. Still. Yeah. We still have freedom of pizza, yeah. Yeah, so we are fine. <laughs> but yeah, now we'll do. let's get to the question that the previous okay. leave to you. So the question is, uh, what do you prefer, instrument instrument uh, instrumental music or music with vocals on it uh, i prefer music without music okay <laughs> i like the sound of silence that's perfect and now it's your turn to to leave a question for the next okay. guest okay what is your favorite ikea furniture <laughs> and why beautiful Let's see what the what the next guest is going the next guest is going to answer to this question. Let's see. That, looking that, forward this to is, this. This is a perfect. So, what's your favorite? My favorite is the bedding, which is unfortunately is out of production, but it was uh, my companion for many years in many places. I brought him all the way. It's a sofa bed. Yeah. Was very comfortable. I slept many times on it. I had it in my apartment in Berlin. I had it in my apartment in Jerusalem. I think we also had it in one of the apartments I lived in in, in Spain. So the bedding was always there for me, and I regret that there's no more bedding in production. Otherwise, yeah, I would have gotten one for me, even for my home. So yeah, sad memories. Yeah, well, or it's beautiful, nostalgic. beautiful memories. Beautiful but memories. Sad, it's nostalgic memories. That... Yeah that is not available anymore. But uh, we are at the end of this episode. So thank you so much. It was really a pleasure to have you here. Thanks to you. And uh, would you like to say something uh, to the people that are listening or watching it? Yes, people that listen to this podcast, uh, thanks for listening and watching because it was long and uh, I am boring just like Nano was music. So don't listen to me and don't listen to Nano Rough Steel. <laughs> Grazie. <laughs>